straight guy. Just another example of our vile entertainment industry trying to normalize perversion. Any true Christian ought to be enraged that they would show such filth on primetime TV. Now, what does our Christian president think about it? He thinks it's funny. Um, sorry, Lord couldn't be here. And I'm sorry, Secretary Rumsfeld's not here either. The guy constantly surprises me. Do you know what Rummy's favorite TV show is? Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. <laughs> My cabinet could take some pointers from watching that show. In fact, I'm going to have the Fab Five do a makeover on Ashcroft. <laughs> that was from the 2003 White House Correspondence Dinner. In 2002, our wonderful Christian president had as his special guest Ozzy Osbourne, a performer so filthy that MTV has to bleep out the majority of his dialogue. What a fantastic audience we had tonight. Washington power brokers, celebrities, Hollywood stars, Ozzy Osbourne. The thing about Ozzy is he's made a lot of big hit recordings. Party with the animals, Sabbath, bloody Sabbath, face in hell, black skies and bloodbath in paradise. Ozzy, mom loves your stuff. Now, is this the language or behavior of a Christian? At this point, many of you may be saying, but Bush talks so much about faith and God. Well, did you ever notice that Bill Clinton claimed to be a good Baptist? But his fruit showed him to be a whoremongering liar. Now, I don't care how many photo ops he had singing in the choir or carrying his Bible into church. You could tell what he was by his fruits. Now, we should hold George Bush to an even higher standard because he makes his faith in God the centerpiece of his public image. But when you examine him closely, you begin to see that the God of George W. Bush is not the God of the Holy Bible, but a false God, the God of the New World Order. Like Father, like son. Out of these troubled times, our fifth objective, a new world order, a new world order, a new world order, a new world order. Now look at this issue of the Japan Times from February 19th, 2002. This article details a visit by George W. Bush to a pagan Shinto shrine. Now, the article clearly says that Bush not only visited the temple, but actually bowed to the shrine. Now, the fact that this was considered an act of worship is made clear by the fact that Japan's prime minister would not accompany Bush into the shrine because of the separation of state and religion. Now, no Christian I know would visit a pagan shrine or bow before a false god, but the Shinto shrine is not the only pagan house of worship that Bush attends. Bush frequently attends Islamic mosques and has even held Ramadan dinners at the White House. He refers to the Koran as the word of God and has stated more than once that his god is the same god Muslims worship. But don't take my word for it. Listen for yourself. I want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. It's practiced freely by many millions of Americans and by millions more in countries that America counts as friends. Its teachings are good and peaceful. And those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. Islam traces its origins back to God's call on Abraham. And Ramadan commemorates the revelation of God's word in the Holy Quran to the prophet Muhammad. A word that is read and recited with special attention and reverence 
by Muslims during this season. Do we all worship the same God, Christian and Muslim? I think we do. Does. We have different routes of getting to the Almighty. Does Bin Laden, does uh, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi pray to the same God that you and I do? Uh, I think they pray to a false God, otherwise they wouldn't be killing uh, innocent lives like they have been. Do Christians and non-Christians, the Muslims, go to heaven in your mind? Yes, they do. We have different routes of getting there. Now it is obvious that George Bush has no problem using the false name Allah as a proper name for the God of the Bible. But listen to how he handles a verse of scripture containing the name of our Lord Jesus Christ during the prayer service immediately following 9-11. As we've been assured, neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth can separate us from God's love. Now these statements are definitely not the fruits of a Christian. But this behavior is identical to the beliefs of Freemasons, Wiccans, and other secret societies. Earlier, we saw from the scriptures that there was a cult of evil, a secret conspiracy which existed throughout the entire history of Israel. Now, we're going to look deeper into this cult of evil and see that the very same cult of evil which dates back to ancient Egypt exists in America today, and that just as ancient Israel worshipped the devil in groves, our leaders do the same. I know it sounds shocking, but it's all documented, and you're going to see it. Now, when we think of the founding of our country, we like to think about great men like Patrick Henry, who said, This great nation of ours was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ. And John Adams, who said, The destiny of America is to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to all men everywhere. And even George Washington said, It is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. But, on the other hand, at the very same time, Satan and his cult of evil were on the scene as well. Now, look in your Bibles at Luke chapter 4. The Bible says, And the devil, taking him up into an high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, notice that Jesus did not dispute Satan's claim to ownership of the kingdoms of this world. Jesus knew that the title deed to this planet was delivered unto Satan when Adam sinned. And you know, the Bible says Christ was tempted in all points, like as we are, yet without sin. Satan's offer was real. You, did you know the Bible, in fact, calls Satan the God of this world? The Bible says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Now, it is true that the physical kingdoms of this world will one day belong to Christ when he returns. But until he does, Satan decides who gets to rule. Now look again and notice the qualifications to rule in Satan's kingdom. He said, if thou wilt worship me. It was true in ancient Egypt and it's still true today. The rulers of this world are devil worshippers. Now, in many pagan cultures, including ancient Egypt, Satan, also known as Lucifer, was worshipped as the sun god, and in Egypt was represented by the all-seeing eye, called the eye of Horus or the eye of Osiris. This symbol has been used by secret societies like the Illuminati down through the ages to show their allegiance to Lucifer. This same symbol appears on the great seal of the United States above an Egyptian pyramid clearly demonstrating the Luciferian influence in the founding of our nation.